All right, hello, uh, my name is Kelsey Mock. I'm a biology student here at Concordia. I'm gonna be talking about the research that I did this last summer here at Concordia and the thesis I wrote titled UV irradiation of thymine molecules and gas chromatography mass spectrometry. So I'll give you a little bit of background of the reaction that I study. Um, I study thymine dimer formation, which thymine is one of the four nucleobases of our DNA, so it makes up our genetic material. And thymine dimer formation is this reaction where two thymine molecules, which are next to each other, are hit with a lot of UV light, and they spontaneously form right here these thymine dimers. So they form, form one molecule together. Um, I'll spare you the photochemistry explanation of this for the sake of time, but this can't be done thermally. This is only a reaction that can be done with UV light. So what do they do and why do we really care about thymine dimers? Um, as you can see in the DNA here, when thymine dimers are formed, they cause these lesions. And that means that there's like kinks in our DNA, so they're not able to be read correctly. Um, normally thymine dimers are cut out and replaced by new thymine molecules that aren't attached. So they don't typically cause a lot of problems because they can be repaired. However, unrepaired thymine dimers can lead to problems in DNA replication and transcription since they aren't able to be read correctly, which can lead to DNA mutations, which can subsequently lead to skin cancer. So that's where you see some of the connections between exposure to sunlight and UV irradiation and the incidence of skin cancer. One of those ways is through the creation of thymine dimers. So now a little bit of the analysis that I did in the lab. I used this machine here, which is called a GCMS, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. The gas chromatography portion of it, chromatography is any type of process that separates out any parts of a compound. So if you have a solution and you want to analyze one of the molecules, you have to separate them out so you know specifically what you're looking at. I did this through gas chromatography. Basically, I take my sample, put it through a little, there's a coiled up tube in here and it goes through the tube, it's like 30 meters long. And as it goes through, um, the different molecules are separated out and they come out at different times. So I can choose the time when I want to look at each of them. I then go through mass spectrometry, which is a type of analyzation method to find out the mass of the compound you're looking at, as well as the mass of the different functional groups. So you can use them kind of like different puzzle pieces to put together a picture of what you're looking at and kind of figure out what exactly the molecule is or if you're finding what you think you are. Um, so with my reaction in the lab, we took thymine and tried to create thymine dimers and analyze them using GCMS. Thymine by itself isn't actually able to go through GCMS because it's not able to become a gas full enough, so you have to react it first. So we are trying a new type of reaction in order to see if we can get thymine dimers to be analyzed this way. There are some currently, but they're really difficult to work with, and so we wanted to use IBCF, which was um, a chemical which has a reaction that was a little easier to do. The reason we wanted to do this was the motivations for our lab or the project was we wanted to develop a more biologically focused lab for our organic chemistry students. Most of our chemistry students are actually biology majors like myself and a lot of our students want to go into the medical field. So we figured something like this would be a little better to work as a lab because it would be more interesting for them and a little more applicable to their um, studies and their careers in the future. And the, way, the reason why we chose IBCF in this reaction was we needed to find a way that was simple and cost effective so the undergraduate students could do this in the lab and it wouldn't be too hard for them, but also it's something that we could replicate um, in a way that was cost effective over a couple years within the curriculum. So generally what I did in the lab, I did a combination of some bench work as well as using the machine and analyzing the results. So I got a really good feel of what it's like to not only do the chemical reactions, also to learn how to use the GCMS, which was a project in and of itself and to analyze the results, so kind of the whole scope of the research process. This is just a little example of some of the results that I got. This right here is one of my spectrums. So you see that each of these peaks represents a different mass of different fragments of the molecule. As they go through the mass spectrum, they're actually this high energy electron beam is shot at them and they're fragmented in a bunch of different ions. And so they show all the different fragments. So it's kind of like a chemistry puzzle how you can put together each of these different fragments which represent the different parts of the molecule. And so this was our just our thymine control to make sure that our machine was working, which took a couple weeks to figure out to make sure that we were using the right settings that everything was going through correctly. Unfortunately, we didn't get very great results from our thymine dimer formation. We got something that came out through the GCMS, but we weren't able to confirm that this was our dimer being formed. 
So unfortunately, we weren't really able to confirm great results from that. But it was still a really great experience for me as wanting to be a researcher. Um, it was pretty exciting. And even though I don't want to pursue chemistry in the future, it was just a really cool opportunity for me to learn more about what research looks like. Um, for future directions for the research, what could be done to confirm whether our dimer was actually being formed because we don't, we weren't able to see it, so we don't know if our reaction wasn't working or if our UV light wasn't working. Um, and then also, if successful, with maybe for the research in the future, we hope that our procedures could be developed into an undergraduate lab so they can be used in our organic chemistry class here at Concordia. So I'd like to thank Dr. Johnson and the rest of my committee for all their help that they did uh, through my research and writing my thesis, and thank Concordia for the opportunity to do this type of research. Thank you. Yes. I'll ask the question we ask a lot. So where are you headed and what is this, how does your research play into your future directions? You mentioned you're interested in research. Yeah, this was a really good opportunity for me because I had a feeling I wanted to do research, but I didn't have any experience, so I didn't really know. And it, I definitely do want to pursue research. Um, whether this next year or the next few years, I want to pursue a PhD in immunology to become a researcher in the immunological field. And um, this, for a lot of those programs, you have to have research experience. So this kind of gave me a jump start into the next couple years of my experience in the field or in my education as a researcher. Yes. Um, just for those who haven't done research, how would you compare your experience doing this project compared to something you would do in one of your uh, lab classes that you've taken here? Um, definitely, not that our labs and in classes always work, but it's a, you have an expectation of what's going to happen when you're in the lab. You're like, oh, these are the results I'm supposed to get because everyone else is getting that. But with this, we were just totally jumping into it with no idea if it was going to work or not, which was frustrating at first because nothing was working. And that was definitely kind of hard to overcome, but um, there's a lot of troubleshooting, problem solving, a lot of late nights and afternoons just trying to figure out what the heck was going on with our GCMS. Um, but it's, it's a really good experience to be able to just jump into a situation and have to go through every part of it and just see where issues are coming along and where things are instead of having everything laid out for you. Yeah? Do you think it was a more of a helpful experience that things didn't work out in the plan? I think definitely it was because um, it really challenged me to make sure I knew everything about the reaction and consider a lot of things that, if something didn't work, I was like, oh wow, I didn't even consider that that might have made a difference in this. Um, like, keeping our react, we had to keep our reaction frozen when we irradiate it, and sometimes we didn't realize that the dry ice would melt, and we weren't able to do it for as long as we thought it would. So there were definitely some bumps in the road, and I think that just really showed how in-depth research needs to be and how you need to consider so many different things.